our drone reveals an apocalyptic landscape of industrial decline. Abandoned mine buildings as far as the eye can see. We are in Ziu Valley, Romania's famous coal heartland. What will happen to Europe's coal regions as the transition away from the fuel occurs? Will the European Union be able to set the course for a sustainable relaunch? Will Romania be able to put things on the right track for a smooth changeover in Ziu Valley? The first mine here opened in 1840. Ziu Valley became the region's powerhouse. Without doubt, it's had a glorious past. But does it still have a glorious future? The Ziu Valley was Romania's coal heartland, but the rise of production costs and the global warming issue have forced the end of the mining for black gold. Will Romania succeed in managing the change? Unreported Europe takes you to Romania's Valley of Tears. Former miner Kirtilin Kernersha shows us a way to sneak into the abandoned coal mine of Petrilla. In the communist era, 16 coal mines were busy in the Zoo Valley. 12 of them are now closed. Locals have seen employment in coal go down from 50,000 in the 90s to 4,000 today. Buildings are crumbling. But at the far end of the site, friends of Kenosha are unloading coal from a neighboring mine to be transported to a nearby power plant. Kenosha suffered severe lung damage during his years of hard work. I worked in the mine for 27 years. We never had enough air, the oxygen concentration was too low. Together with other gases and dust, this triggered lung diseases. All former miners suffer from pulmonary problems, life expectancies shorter. There was a recent study showing that ex-miners die between 56 and 65 years in this valley because of lung disease and silicosis. Ziu Valley is located in southwestern Romania, six hours from the capital Bucharest. Livergen is one of the coal mines that's still open. The early morning shift is back from work. Gabriel and his colleagues have just learnt of a decree signed by the Minister of the Economy, announcing the closure of two more mines in the Ziu Valley starting in 2024. The European Commission's Green Deal is trying to smooth the phasing out of coal across the bloc via the Just Transition mechanism. For the next seven years, the European Commission's earmarked 40 billion euros specifically for the coal regions in transition scheme. This will be topped up by further billions, adding up to around 150 billion euros. This is Gabriel and Mariana Radu at home. Gabriel's had a hard day. He's a 10 tons per day man, some colleagues told us. His work gallery's 500 meters below the surface. A few years ago, Gabriel's leg was crushed by falling tunnel beams. Mining's a family tradition. The couple's son works there too. Besides mining, there's nowhere to work around here. When you look at the money you get, it's never enough. There's no future around here. Most of the young people are leaving. They go abroad where they can make some money. There are no jobs around here. Where should we go to work? Everything's closed. Should we all go working in a pub? There's nothing else left. For my part, I'd like to have the coal mining to be ongoing, on all those kids to have a job. But if this is what the European Union wants, to close the coal mines, well then... My opinion is that if all the coal mines close, then the whole Zoo Valley will close too. I think the mines should not close. They should go on working. They should invest in them and go on working. What a shame. I regret that they won't continue coal mining in the Zoo Valley.
Local artist Eunice Gall depicts the value of coal her way. Scratching the black surface, you'll find people with a heart of gold. But there's no gold, no money, just a financial abyss in the energy firm of Hunadora. The insolvent public company steers Azu Valley's remaining coal mines and power plants towards restructuring. Christian Roju has to tunnel through a mountain of debt. The former miner was appointed as special administrator, a thankless task. We still have four active coal mines in the valley, and two of them, Lopen and Lonia, are undergoing closure soon. The other two mines, Vulcan and Livigen, do not have any closure date fixed. They go on working like coal mines elsewhere in the European Union, like Germany and Poland. As long as German and Polish mines continue to extract coal, Vulcan and Livigen will do the same. We have to keep in mind that there are no other places around here where people could go and work, there are no other industries. For instance, my own family, my parents, my grandparents and my great-grandparents, they worked in coal mines here. It's the same family history for everybody living here. We are tied to the mines by an umbilical cord. Romanian thermal power plants use outdated technologies and most of them risk not complying with tougher environmental conditions imposed by the European Commission beginning in 2021. One of the Parashen plant's units was recently upgraded. With the support of a Japanese company, Parashen was equipped with state-of-the-art filter techniques, a 200 million euro investment. Limestone is used to get sulfur oxides out of the coal emissions. But this doesn't solve the CO2 problem, which contributes massively to global warming. This operating unit is compliant not only with the environmental requirements of today, but also with the even more restrictive ones coming into force next year. There are other factors to be taken into account, such as the lifetime of the equipment, around 28 to 30 years, and also the quantity of coal mining out of the mines. Both will come to an end at the same time. When it comes to a decision about the future energy mix, we have to pay close attention to our energy supply security. My opinion is we need to invest in renewables and in natural gas because it's important for the energy supply security. And last but not least, we need to invest in nuclear energy. Moving on to Bucharest. Bankwatch Romania has a close eye on taxpayers' money and the country's energy mix. That's why Alexandru Mustata is furious. He believes more should be invested in renewables instead of servicing the financial black hole of the loss-making fossil fuel industry. The coal from Jiu Valley is very expensive. Mining is very expensive. The equipment is dated, it's 30 years old. And also there have been a lot of accidents because there was no modernization in the mines for the past decades. Second of all, because still this modernized power plant is very polluting. It's one of the most polluting units in the country. And despite the fact that it was modernized, it is still not efficient in terms of costs as well. The company operating these power plants, Hunadora Energy Complex, has debt of close to 1 billion euro. It is insane. For the past four years, they did not pay for the pollution they have been producing. The company is... It's a mystery how this company is still functioning today considering the debt it has accumulated over time. We have an appointment with Virgil Daniel Popescu, Romania's Minister of Economy and Energy. No new coal power plant will be built in Romania, he confirms to Euronews, but what about the remaining coal mines? Geo Valley, there was an agreement that uh, out of those four still working coal mines, two would have been closed in 2018. They are still open. Why? Yes, they are still open because the last government didn't, uh, didn't take in consideration the big quantity of coal that is there in the mines, and that's a big risk of uh, auto-ignition there. You will get 4.4 billion euro inside this just transition mechanism 
this a huge amount of money, how you will make use of this? First of all, just uh, you have to know that we are committed to support Green Deal. And if we are committed to support Green Deal, we have to make the transition. And the transition from coal to renewables through a transition of fuel, it's a priority for us. We already work at a program in to, to, to make the transition from coal through gas. We have the money, we have the financial, and we know what to do it. So we will do it. In 10, 20 or 30 years, up to you to choose. Will there be still some coal mining activity in Romania? After 30 years now, i just give you an answer. We cannot stay freeze in the past. Colourful murals depict Zoo Valley's mining past and the vision for a more sustainable future. We're back in Petroshan, one of the Zoo Valley's main mining towns. The mayor is a former mining engineer from the Livergen mine. He convinced towns across the valley to sign a common memorandum in Brussels, agreeing with the European Commission that the Green Deal needs to become local now. The workplaces of the future in the valley aren't going to be found in coal anymore, but in tourism, services and renewable energies. It's important what's going on in Brussels. They created this platform for coal regions in transition, and for the first time they put the human being and families at the centre, not just economic profit or only the environment, but the human being. The president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, said nobody will be left behind. Mind. The countries sharing those common goals will go through those big changes together with the full support of the Commission. The Green New Deal means work. Nikolai Dumitrescu is another former miner. After leaving the mine at Petrilla, he worked for many years in Italy. But the desire to be his own boss brought him back home, where he launched his own small construction company. Zoo Valley's just transition boosts activity. I guess the future is in construction, stuff like we're doing, energy efficiency renovations. The building infrastructure in cities is evolving, even in villages. On top of that, there'll be investments in IT. We have some nice IT companies around. But all those changes need to be supported by the European Union. The small and medium enterprises and startups that are going to be created need help to make things move. Zoo Valley's just transition is still in the pipeline. Most projects will take place over the next seven years. An overall plan's in the making. Among the options being discussed is the transformation of the Coal Valley into an all-year-round tourist destination. We have an appointment with Emil Parau. He made a fortune in the timber trade and reinvested the profits locally. This helped build Straja Ski Resort with plans for a second location further up the valley. The valley has fantastic tourist potential. This isn't just about ski tourism. Our region has breathtaking beauty. In a few years, we'll have thousands of cycling tourists coming to the valley. By next year, hopefully, we'll have finished some 500 kilometres of mountain bike trails and we have one of the best regions in Europe for caving. We're organising it so that 500 people can work here in Straja during the ski season. That's already the employment level of a small mine. Why not imagine that in the future we will have thousands of people employed in tourism along the valley? Maybe the valley's future can be found here. Europe needs electric charging stations and Marius Surley develops them. He started his career in a coal mine, having launched his company with three people. He now employs 65 and is still expanding. The development of our company was based on the workforce available from the mining sector and also young graduates from the local university. Thanks to some European funding, our company was able to speed up development. Stefan Nister is a former miner too. He came from Moldova. As a young man, he looked for adventure and a future. Having heard about the coal mines in the Zoo Valley, he moved to a region that he and many others believed to be a kind of El Dorado. His high hopes were dashed. Like many others, he lost work in the mine, but managed to retrain. 
I'm a tool engineering technician. I know how to repair and maintain all sorts of machines. The know-how from the mine has helped me a lot in doing my work here. In the mine, I learned welding, managing conveyors. This is rock-solid mining knowledge, and I can use it around here. You just need to be creative. The real treasure of the Zoo Valley is the deep-rooted technical knowledge. It'll be this know-how that will enable people here to construct a new, sustainable future. The University of Petrushan is a key player. Having started decades ago as a mining school, it's now an institution offering all kinds of studies to build up technical and management capacities. I see the Zoo Valley as Romania's future Silicon Valley. Zoo Valley also has a future as an energy valley. We have the potential, the skills and the specialized workforce. We can train top experts at our university. I think the future of our valley will be a mix of tourism, cutting-edge technology and some lasting conventional technologies. Kirtilin Kanersha knows that the cultural heritage of the valley's mining history needs to be preserved amidst this new era. Together with other miners, local artists and architects, he set up an association called Planeta Petrilla. In the Saviour's Memory Museum, he shows us his old mining helmet. It took him three years of his own efforts to set up the first rooms of this so far still unofficial mining museum. With his own hands, he even built a replica of an old-style mine. These are the impressive but early stages of a project in the making that one day could have genuine international impact, attracting tourists from all over the world. Kenesha shows us the footage he took himself the very last day deep down in the Petrilla mine. This was before the galleries closed forever. He was the last coal miner of Petrilla. A group of architects based in Bucharest, Timisoara and Paris are the driving force of Planeta Petrilla. They were alarmed by plans to raise to the ground all of the old mine buildings. Working quickly, they've saved at least some from destruction. In the Zoo Valley, they set up meetings, gathering proposals on how to transform the mine into something completely different. When we had our first meeting with the citizens of Petrila, some of them um, had the idea, and this opened our eyes, uh, to build uh, pools, for instance, because uh, these cones here, they used to um, be reservoirs of water for washing the coal. So you're going to have a, a leisure space at the top of the building with a nice view on Petrila and on the whole mining area. So then an exhibition, uh, taking place in the other large cone, which was an idea coming from Jan Barbu, where he proposed to have uh, this circular ramp that would enable one to, to explore this very particular space. And the fact that it is connected to railway to Petroshan, this is why this building is a very good starting point, as it is a node of circulation uh, that would bring people into this new adventure, so to say. But this vision of a tourist hotspot boosting the valley's economy towards sustainable development, creating jobs, hope and a future, is under threat. Only a few of the mining buildings have special protection status so far, and there's an ongoing struggle about how much of the mine will be transformed. In the past two years, some 10,000 visitors have come here. Kenosha gives them a tour, sharing knowledge and memories with parents, kids and tourists. In 10 years' time, this should be a museum, an industrial heritage site. The renovation of these buildings would bring jobs to the valley for the people of Petrilla. My dream is that in 10 years' time, this will be a tourist spot, with a theatre scene performing drama, with open-air cinema. There is real potential. The end of coal mining should not mean the end of the valley. Not at all. Innovative business startups, tourist projects, investments into green technology. Zoo Valley does have the power to rebuild a new sustainable future, emerging from the ruins of an outdated 
fossilized past.